embodying that, I would say, figuring out once you've figured out who you are and what you care about, then realizing that that is how you're going to design your life. Welcome to the Daily Coffee Pro by Mapper Ford Friends. I'm your host, Lee Safar, and this is episode two of a five-part series with the incredible Kira Kennedy. Kira, we are talking about leading yourself and others. In this episode, I want to ask you, what does it mean to lead yourself? You are a person who constantly, two people in my life, you and my mother, are the two people, maybe three, Angelo as well, who we both know, um, but it is exemplary the way that you demonstrate to me the attempts that you make to lead yourself, particularly in challenging times. Your, and, and your leading principle that I have witnessed in that is openness. What, mm. what does it mean in your mind to lead yourself? Well... I think it really starts with, um, I call it doing the inside job, which <laughs> means figuring out who you are and more importantly, what do you care about? Yeah, wow. Well. And it's it's so funny when you start thinking about what do I care about, you can say, well, I want, I want safety or I want... Mm health or I want love or I want this. But I think once you start digging into that onion, each of those cares, what does good health mean and why is it important to you? Mm. Uh, what is learning? For me, learning is a huge big deal. And what does learning mean? And to get into that, some people want to learn, know everything there is to know about politics, or they're really interested in the movies they're watching, or they are interested in cooking or whatever. And mm -hmm. I've really come to the conclusion that learning what I care about is leadership. Leadership and team building and understanding that we together are creating a future. And I see that everywhere I go. And I I used to put myself down that I um, I didn't care enough about a lot of other things. And recently, I went down the Grand Canyon and there was a young woman and it was Beck and she was in charge of the paddle boat and the Grand Canyon has some big ass rapids <laughs> and you can get killed in these rapids. Okay. And so at the beginning, there would be six people there and those six people needed to get through the rapids. Mm. And at the end of the week, I realized she was an incredible leader in team builder. And what happened is she... She um, got us all together, and the vision is, this is dangerous. And together, we control this raft, and I can't do it without you, because you are the power. Wow. And so we have a vision of getting to the bottom, having as much fun as we can, and getting to the bottom of the rapids. Then she explained to us what each of us were supposed to do, and... Uh, then she would have a check-in conversation and we would talk about something pretty heavy duty about um, our lives or what was important to us or why we were there or whatever. And people shared some, some vulnerable things. So you got to know each other and that was the psychological safety, the listening to each other. We're all in this together. And uh, I just saw team building in all the different, mm. there is a vision, there is a purpose, there is a team that has to make it happen. You have to trust each other. Now, what does trust mean? 
Mm -hmm. meaning that you figure people are going to do what they said they're going to do. They know how to do it and they're going to do it. So trust is not, oh yeah, I want to be, I'm going to paddle. It's like, no, no, some of you know how to paddle. Somebody's explained it to you. You know how hard to paddle. You know how to follow. You know when it's important. So how to build a team, I just, so going back to lead yourself is figure out what you care about, what's important to you, and then design a life that you are going to thrive in. And then, so I think that's leading yourself. And it's also understanding the issues that you have. We all have um, origin stories or stories, insecurities or hurts and pains. And being able to understand those and how they impact how you deal with other people, how you listen, how you live in the world. Digging through all of that is that inside job of figuring out what do I care about? Who am I? And um, and so, and then embodying that, I would say, figuring out once you figured out who you are and what you care about, then realizing that that is how you're going to design your life. Friends, World of Coffee Dubai is back in 2024 and I am proud to announce that the Daily Coffee Pro by Mapper Forward will be the official podcast partner for World of Coffee Dubai for the second year in a row. The Roasters Village will be a one of a kind destination for all things coffee. As an exhibitor, introduce your artisanal roasts to an international audience and gain valuable insights from their perspective. Visitors, immerse yourself in the celebratory coffee culture experience by sampling exclusive cups poured with passion from cafes worldwide and absorb insights that will elevate your own appreciation of all things coffee. Whether you brew coffee or just love savoring a fine cup, this event gathers the global coffee community under one roof in an amazing city. Join us at World of Coffee Dubai in 2024 at Dubai World Trade Center from the 21st until the 23rd of January. Tickets are available at Dubai worldofcoffee.org or you can contact us on social media for any questions that you might have at mapforward.coffee. Get your tickets now folks. Come see the podcast being recorded live and we hope to see you in January in Dubai for World of Coffee. You're not going to all of the civil say I don't really care about cooking but I've decided I'm going to become a great chef because mm. that's what my father was, or that's what my mother was. It's really about, oh, these are my strengths. These are my interests. This is what I'd like to learn. This is who I am as a person. And I'm going to go out and create a life that, uh, that fulfills that future. And so I call that leading yourself mm -hmm. and it's not easy because you then go out and get a job and you find out that the job isn't actually fulfilling all the things you would like or you get involved with with people that don't fulfill what you think you want and so it's it's working through what i care about who i am what future i would like and working through all the issues that living is going to throw into that and doing the dance where you still end up being the person you you uh, need to be or you are. I I want to talk about courage here because that's that that's the natural kind of place that this needs to go next because what you're talking about is the way that I see it is the difference between doing the easy hard work and the hard hard work. 
it's hard work where, you know, 18 hours, you know, building a business is going to be, you're going to work seven days a week for three years straight and you may be eating brown rice and, you know, for, for months on end and, you know, no sleep and, and all of that. That's to me hard work, but it, that's the easy hard work. What you were just talking about where you end up in a team and it doesn't quite fulfill you the way that you felt it should fulfill you and staying present for that and allowing yourself to sit in the discomfort of that. That's when the real work starts of leading yourself, in in my opinion. I'd love to hear your thoughts on what you think about that. Yeah, I as I heard that, again, I heard that you're on this team and the team isn't necessarily what you would like it to be and who are you going to be on that team. And, uh, you know, sometimes the leader of the team doesn't look, isn't a great leader or is, is, is overwhelmed and involved in way too many things. So I think we each have the ability and the right to be a leader of self Mm -hmm. and a leader within the team. Mm -hmm. And that's what you said of courage, I guess. It takes a lot of courage to not be in charge. Mm. Uh, And yet to make a difference in the direction that that team is going. Is that kind of where you were going? Yeah. And I guess right now I'm really exploring that because I've gotten involved in nonprofits and I'm very involved in some, some committees at my church and everybody there is a volunteer. Mm -hmm. And I might be chairing a committee, but people don't have to show up and people don't have to do what they said they do. And they might not, they might not have the time or whatever. So how to be a leader with, because I don't necessarily have the power of paying people or um, owning the business to be able to accomplish what I want to accomplish. And I think working in a nonprofit is where who you're working with are the volunteers. It's really a wonderful way to learn about leadership with because it's that people want to be there people agree with the purpose and meaning and where you're going in the future that they're creating and that it becomes more about us as a group and the connection that you have as a group as much as the purpose of where you're going. Mm. And so each one of them becomes the leader in the group. And what they say I, I was just recently in something and you you think about your team and somebody comes into the team in a crap mood or not wanting to accomplish something or overwhelmed and it completely changes the mood of the team. So how do we stay aware of ourselves? How am I showing up in the team? Am I coming in uh, I'm not trusting people. Am I coming in wanting it my way? Am I coming in not committed to make something happen? And how does that energy create the ability of the team to move forward? And whether it's it's a company team that you're working with at your company, or whether it's paddling on the Grand Canyon, how people show up, who they show up for, the purpose, all of that, we get to decide ourselves and the leader gets to create that. And sometimes the leader isn't the the person running the team. It's actually Mm. somebody else that creates that mood and that energy and that purpose and that connection. 
And each of us can do that, I think, uh, whether you're the leader or not. And that's leading self and leading others without having the title or the power to do so. It's really about, this is important to me. I want to live my life the way I want to live. I want to thrive. I want you to thrive. And let's do this together. You know, the part that I see a lot of today is an avoidance to lead oneself. I see a lot of, and and part of where I was going with that example is yes, where you were going, where you went, but also the other side of that, which is people constantly moving from scenario to scenario, whether it's a job, a relationship, a workplace, a profession, whatever it is, people constantly shifting out of something the moment it gets uncomfortable and people not realizing that perhaps leading yourself is the idea that I need to stay so that I can show the, so I can let this moment of discomfort show me what it's here to teach me. And which is, which is an incredibly courageous endeavor in my experience and from what personally, and from what I've witnessed in other people, the real leaders, the real champions, in leadership are the people who get comfortable with the discomfort of the hard, hard work. What do, you, do you agree with that? Oh, yes. And I, you know, Lee, I think you're a perfect example of this. Thank you. you you've been doing podcasts for how many years? A long time. Before mm-hmm. podcasts, were a thing, I think. Mm -hmm. And, and you put yourself in the position of being a beginner over and over again and learning and growing in your ability to, to dance on a podcast. And when I say dance, I think the great podcasters or interviewers or leaders all realize that you are walking into a situation that you don't know exactly what's going to happen. And so you have to be able to show up, be present, connect, and trust yourself to be able to handle whatever comes. And sometimes you're going to do it with grace and ease, and sometimes you're going to do it uh, <laughs> and feel like a failure. Like a failure, or be, 100%. Or be embarrassed. And I can't yeah. even imagine you do it on a podcast daily. And so you get to listen to the times when you go back and go, oh, I sure wish I would have said that differently. Oh, yeah. Whereas most of us are not doing it where we get to go back and say, oh, that was really stupid or, oh. And I think those types of learnings of, first of all, being a beginner. Mm failing, failing, what do they say? Fail fast, fail often. You learn a lot quicker. Um, But all of it takes courage, Mm. a willingness to learn, a humility, and maybe the understanding. We started this conversation of listening, listening to yourself and realizing that we are all humans. Mm. We all have strengths, struggles, problems, ways of looking at the world that get in the way of us being successful. And that's that inside job again, is Mm. being able to go back no matter how old you are or where you are in your life to be able to go back and say, oh, I'm a beginner again. 
And it's okay as I'm learning this, that I am going to make mistakes and I'm going to look like a fool and I'm going to judge myself harshly. Other people might judge me harshly too. Mm. And that that's just part of the game. And there's something to be said for as much as there's something to be said for having the courage to be a beginner at something. There's also something to be said for sticking up the ride. And in the next episode, folks, you're going to understand what I mean by that. Join us for the next episode. Peace, love and peanut butter. Have an amazing rest of your day. Thanks, friends. If you enjoyed this video, here's what you should check out next. Consider supporting Mapper Forward on Patreon and be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell before you leave.